A ladder 25 feet long is leaning against the wall of a house. The base of the ladder is pulled away from the wall at a rate of two feet per second. Okay, so we have a, a ladder leaning against the wall of the house and someone is pulling the ladder away from the wall at two feet per second. We're gonna do all three parts. What is the velocity of the top of the ladder when the base is given below? So we want the, how fast the top of the ladder is sliding down the wall when the base is seven feet, then 15 feet, then 20 feet. Okay, so actually I lied. <laughs> We're only gonna do the one that's 20 feet, and the reason is because here it's 20 feet and here it's 20 feet. So once you know how to do the one for 20 feet, you can do the one for seven and 15 feet. Okay, so let's draw a picture of our house. So here's our little house. Here's our little roof. And then here is the ladder. And so we know one thing for sure, the ladder is 25 feet, so we can write that down first. Then we're told how fast the ladder is being pulled away. It's a rate at, of two feet per second. So that's a derivative, that's the rate of change of this horizontal distance here. So that means with that we need to give this distance a name, so let's call it x. Likewise, we want to know how fast the top of the ladder is moving down the house. So we need to give the vertical distance a name, so let's call it y. Okay, now that we've labeled our picture, we can write down everything that's given and what we actually need to find. So in this problem, we are given that it's being pulled away from the house at a rate of two feet per second. So that's the rate of change of x with respect to time. And we need how fast the ladder is moving down the wall. That's the rate of change of y with respect to time, so dy dt. And we need this at the moment when x is 20 feet, so when the base is 20 feet from the wall, right? So uh, now we somehow need to relate all of these variables. Well, we can use uh, the theorem of Pythagoras, right? Because we can assume we have a right triangle here. Whoops, F7, let me not do that. <laughs> so let's use um, the theorem of Pythagoras. So we have x squared plus y squared equals 25 squared, right? So x squared plus y squared equals 25 squared. So if you square the sides and you add them up, it equals the hypotenuse squared. And now we need to take the derivative of both sides of this equation uh, with respect to time, because the variable here is time. So you use the power rule. So 2x times, and now we have to use the chain rule, uh, the derivative of the inside function. So x is our inside function, so its derivative is dx dt. If we were taking the derivative with respect to x, it would just be 2x dx dx, right? But dx dx is one, so here it's dx dt. Plus 2y, again, chain rule, times the derivative of that inside function, dy dt. And the derivative of this number is zero. All right, we know dx dt is two, so we can plug it in. So there's gonna be a two here, so two times two is four. So four x plus two y dy dt equals zero. So I skipped a step there, just pretend this is two, and then two times two is four. Subtract the four x, so you get two y dy dt equals negative four x. Finally, divide by two y, so we get dy dt equals negative four x over two y. And then we can simplify this a bit, so this becomes dy dt equals negative 2x over y. So now we just need x and y. So we know we have x, x is 20. We just need to find the value of y. So to find the value of y, we'll take this x and we'll plug it back into this equation up here, okay? So when x is 20, we have 20 squared plus y squared equals 25 squared. And we just subtract the 20 squared. So we have y squared equals 25 squared minus 20 squared. To get rid of the two on the y, you simply take the square root and then you get y equals. And what is this number? I'm gonna put it in my calculator. So it's the square root of 25 squared minus 20 squared. I got 15, feels very, very right. <laughs> 15, it's a whole number, right? So. So finally, we can write the answer down. So dy dt, 
at the moment in time when the ladder is 20 feet from the house, the base of the ladder, is equal to, let me scroll down a little bit, come down here, equal to, so it's negative 2, x is 20, we said, and then y is 15, right, y is 15. So this is equal to negative 40 over 15. And you can reduce this, I guess. 5 goes into 48 times, so it would be negative 8 over 3. And the units are feet per second, so feet per sec, feet per sec. So the answer to this part should be negative 8 over 3. All right, let's go ahead and do part B. Okay, part B. Part B says, consider the triangle formed by the side of the house, ladder, and the ground. Find the rate of change of the area of the triangle when the base of the ladder is 20 feet from the wall. Okay. So we have a triangle here, right? This is the triangle they're talking about right here. We want the rate of change of the area of this triangle. Recall that the area of a triangle is one half base times height, right? Let me write that down. So let me come down here and redraw the triangle for us. You see it, change colors, here we go. So this was our house, and then this was our ladder, and this was X, and this was uh, Y, and this was 25. So area is one-half base times height, right? Area is one-half base times height. That's for a triangle. So in this case, it's one-half. Well, the base is uh, x, and the height is y. All right, so now we have to find the rate of change of the area. That's the derivative of the area, right? So we have to use the product rule. So dA dt, right, taking the derivative with respect to time on both sides. It's the derivative of the first. So 1 half dx dt times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second dy dt. That's the product rule. The way I do it is I think of this as, this as the first and this is the second. So the derivative of the first is just 1 half dx dt times the second, which is y plus the first times the derivative of the second. We already have this stuff, right? We know from the beginning that dx dt was 2. And we know that dy dt was negative 8 thirds, right? It's negative because the ladder's going down, by the way, so it does make sense that it's negative. Now all we have to do is plug everything in. Oh, also we know that x is uh, 20, and we know that when x is 20, y is 15, see? So we have all of this information that we can plug in from the first part. See, that's why I didn't want to do the 7 and the 15 ones, because I figured, well, what for? Right, this says 20, so we're going to use that information anyways. All right, so now we plug everything in. So dA dt, at the moment in time when x is equal to 20, got to be really careful here, um, this is 1 half, and then dx dt is a 2. We said y was 15 plus 1 half, x was 20, and then dy dt is negative 8 thirds. So these cancel, so you get 15, right? This cancels, so you get 10, so minus 80 over 3. Let's keep going. Grinding it out by hand, old school. I have a calculator here, I could have used it, but it's too late. Let's be a hero. 45 over 3, minus 80 over 3. Um, that's going to be negative oh, 35 over 3, right? Yeah, if you add 35 and 45, um, you, get, you get 80, right? 30 plus 40 is 70. Yeah, it looks okay. And this is going to be uh, feet squared per second. So feet squared per second. So that would be the answer to, to that one. I'm going to check my math here with my calculator really quickly um, just to make sure that everything is okay. Um, so before I continue with this, with this video, yeah, it looks okay. All right, good, good, good. So that was uh, part B, part B. Part C, find the rate at which, th at which the angle between the ladder and the wall of the house is changing when the base of the ladder is 20 feet from the wall. I think this one's a little bit harder. Let's see. So C, so let's draw the picture of the uh, house again and the ladder. So here's our house. And then here's our ladder. Wow, this video was nine minutes. Uh, this is x, this is y, and then here's our theta. This is the angle they're talking about, right? Because it says the angle between the ladder and the wall of the house. That's that one. So we need, we need d theta dt. 
when x is 20. Oh, also, I forgot to label this is, this is 25. All right, so how do we do that? I guess we have to use a trig function, right? We have to use a trig function. Uh, which trig function do we use? I guess we can use any function we want. Um, if this is our theta, I'm thinking maybe tangent. Tangent is um, opposite over adjacent, right? That will give us x over y, right? So remember, so ka toa. I mean, we can just use tangent. Why not? So tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of theta is y over x. You don't have to use tangent. I just figured I'd use tangent. Um, we could use a different one. I'm wondering if that's better, like sine maybe. If we use sine, it would be opposite um, over hypotenuse. Yeah, you know what? Let's be, let's be different. Let's use the sine function. Sine of theta, that's going to be um, opposite over hypotenuse, so x over 25. See, because if you use tangent, we have to use a quotient rule, so that's not fun. All right, so now what we do is we need to find d theta dt. So we'll take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to time. So the derivative of sine is cosine times, and then chain rule, the derivative of the inside function. So the inside function is theta, so its derivative is d theta dt equals, you can think of this as 1 over 25 times x. So this derivative is just 1 over 25 dx dt. Right? And now all we have to do um, is figure everything out. So uh, let's go ahead and plug in dx dt, because we know that's 2. That was given at the beginning of the problem. And let's go ahead and divide by cosine. So we have d theta dt. Dividing by cosine, we get 1 over 25 times 1 over cosine theta times 2 times 2. Okay, so this is 2 over 25 times, and then um, co 1 over cosine is secant theta. Okay, secant in this case is the reciprocal of cosine, right? So it's ha, right, because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. This will be hypotenuse. Uh, over adjacent, so it's 25 over y. So this is 2 over 25 times 25 over y, right? Let me make sure I did that right. So I'm looking at this sideways. So this is our theta. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine would be uh, y over 25. So secant would be 25 over y. Yeah, it looks okay. This is feeling too easy. So d theta dt is 2 over y. And so we want this uh, when x is 20. Well, we know that when x is 20, we said y was, I believe, 15. Let me go back up and look. E what a mess. Um, yeah, right there, y is 15. Yeah, we worked that out at the very beginning of the problem. So this should just be 2 over 15. And the units here are radians per second. So. Uh, kind of a tough problem. It took 13 minutes. Sorry about that. But I hope uh, this video has helped someone out there. This problem is notorious. It uh, takes a lot of work. All three parts are different. Um, and you have to do uh, the beginning parts to do uh, B and C. That's it.